even though I'm, you know, a famous and Olympic champion and, you know, I still get those, get those comments as well. And um, I just wanted to help. Well, we both wanted to help other people really. Hi, I'm Morgan. I'm Women's Health Digital Fitness Writer. And I have the great, great pleasure of chatting with twice Olympic champion Nicola Adams today. We get into her training, her diet, how she's looking after her mental health, and recently why she felt the need to address some of the racist and sexist comments being leveled at her and her girlfriend. So I am beyond excited and so thrilled to welcome Nicola. Hi Nicola, how are you doing? Um, good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really good. Whereabouts in the world are you? Ah, <laughs> I'm in the UK. <laughs> have you been? Have you been getting outside, training in the sunshine, or anything? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've been um, doing workouts in the garden and everything. It's it's been nice. Yeah. What kind of workouts have you been doing? Um, all sorts. I've been doing workouts with my partner Ella. Um, lifting, um, bench pressing, everything, everything. God, it sounds like <laughs> you've got like a pretty good setup. You've got like all the kit that you need to stay really fit at home. Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. I've built it up, up over time. Um, with me, obviously, be, used to being a boxer. So I've, I've got all the home gym stuff. So it's, uh, it's been quite good to be able to just keep, still keeping fit and everything. I mean, I think there was a point recently where you couldn't get a dumbbell or a kettlebell or any sort of weight from anywhere in the world because everyone had just, like, gone onto Argos and bought all of them. Yeah, I, um, I actually tried to get another set of dumbbells and the the price was through the roof so I was like yeah I'll just I'll just wait until that comes down and then yeah. I'll go get some <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah it was ridiculous amounts I think but there was there was some going five kilo two five five kilo dumbbells mm. and they were going for a hundred pounds and it's like it's ridiculous oh my gosh so you mentioned Ella and I know that you guys have been making some really good TikToks as well as staying at home, keeping fit and all that stuff. Um, but one that you posted recently in June, I felt was really poignant and really just, it hit the nail on the head so well in the sense that you said, you, it's so wrong that people discriminate against us for being women, the color of our skin and who we love. And I feel like so many people resonated with that and just felt exactly what you were trying to get across. Is that something that you are facing at the moment or have faced recently, just that hate and discrimination based on, based on such just things that should not be the case at all? It's like, it's stuff that we get, like not all the time, but sometimes. And because we're so good at, you know, just fighting things away and not letting it get to us. Um, I don't, we don't normally say anything, but we were like, do you know what? Maybe we should, because there'll be, there'll be people out there that won't be able to cope with, um, the kind of messages um, that we get um, from time to time and we just wanted to show people how it affects other people mm. and to be to be kinder and, and to keep on fighting for 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 the right thing Definitely. it wasn't it wasn't I, we wasn't expecting it to be so like get so blown up and and so many positive comments <laughs> yeah but I'm, I'm really really glad that it did though it's helped a lot of people as well yeah, and I think like what you mentioned, the mental health toll of it as well, is that how has your mental health fared dealing with these comments on a daily bit, like not on a daily basis, but on a regular enough basis that you feel the need to like create a TikTok and send a message out? It just gets, uh, it gets quite annoying sometimes and like really want to say something back, but I'm like, yeah, I'll just block them. <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot easier. And then I was like, no, do you know what? I think we should say something. Mm. And because I think so, a lot of people will struggle to say say something back and I don't know I just wanted to show that it, it's still even though I'm you know a famous and Olympic champion and you know I still get those get those comments as well and um, I just wanted to help well we both wanted to help other people really and you guys seemingly love TikTok which is fantastic and even yeah. loads of fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have it's um it's been our favorite pastime over over the lockdown <laughs> yeah it's such a good distraction but sometimes I find myself before bed and I'll be scrolling and I look at the clock and 45 minutes will have gone and it's like no <laughs> yeah it is very easily done very easily done <laughs> and so you mentioned being Olympic champion obviously this is just 
a humongous achievement. In London 2012, you were the first woman to win Olympic boxing gold. And then in Rio 2016, you defended your title. I believe there was even a point in 2016 where you were reigning Olympic world and European Games champion at flyweight, which is just phenomenal. Um, but now that you've retired, how, now that you've retired and your body was your business for so long, has it changed how you train, how you treat your body? Has it, has it moved things around now that you're not perhaps competing at that level? Yeah, so now I just, I work out for myself. So instead of training three times a day, I, um, I only train once a day, which is quite nice for me. It's nice and steady. There's no coach shouting at me <laughs> yeah. to, to work harder. Um, I think I'm just, I'm really, I think I'm really enjoying it a lot more now. Um, every now and again I find myself trying to push myself a little bit too hard and I'm like oh it's okay you don't have to train so hard anymore you can you know you can take a take a break and have some water and everything so it's it's been it's been really nice I'm I'm just I think I'm just enjoying being able to spend time with my friends and um, go clubbing and and just and just be able to do the things that I couldn't do when I was when I was in training I, I've missed weddings um, christenings birthdays so it, it's just really nice to be able to do all those all the fun things now as well so I'm like I'm just having fun <laughs> oh, it's so funny isn't it that training once a day like for example I'll be like oh god I've got to work out today like can't be asked need to get it done but then for you it's like a break it's like oh I've got to yeah. work out oh, fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then so what does what does a week in your workouts kind of look like are you focused on things that make you feel good or are you focusing on weightlifting splits or what's kind of your goals at the moment with your training so I'm just um staying all uh, all around fit so um I'll do I'll start off with cardio um mm -hmm. which will be just in interval interval sprints to um keep the fat down and then I do a lifting session so it'll be squats um pull-ups mm -hmm. um and then workouts for my for my arms one um, I'll have a I'll do a heavy day one day and then the other day will be like light weights and, and lots of reps and the, the heavy days like um, less reps and heavier weight mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm really really enjoying it really enjoying it and then I throw in the occasional boxing session as well yeah just make sure I've still that. got it <laughs> 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 oh, I love that. And then obviously to support that kind of training regime, I know once a day is a step down from your three a days, but that still does take a toll on your body. So how are you fueling yourself? Like with your nutrition, what does it look like a typical day on Nicola Adams' plate? My typical diet is now mainly plant-based diet, um, which I've I've got over the last few months I've got really, really into and it's it surprised me actually how much um how better I feel um, after after eating. Like I've got the the Alpro um, oat milk, so I use that instead of um, cow's milk. And and then it's yeah, it's pretty much a, a plant based diet. Um, it was it was quite a it's been quite a change for me as well because when I was a when I was an athlete and in training, I was it was very heavy on the on the meats and everything. Whereas now I've cut a, a lot of the meats out. It's um it surprised me how much how much better I feel, which I wasn't I was at first I was worried about not being able to get enough proteins and and everything in, but um you'd be surprised you'd be surprised what you what kinds of um, amounts of protein you can get out of um just vegetables and and stuff. So it's 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 nice. I feel a lot a lot healthier. My my skin's cleared up a lot better. It's yeah, it's it's good. And. Just going back quickly, because you said that you, when we were talking before, that you found it difficult or challenging sometimes just to pull back into that recovery stage, that you don't need to work out today, you don't need to beast your body just for that day or for that moment. And I know that the injury that led to your retirement was, was a forced injury and that you, you had your pupil torn. Were you ready to retire or did it feel like you were forced into, into that recovery period before you were ready? Well, I was only going to have maybe two or three more fights anyway. So um, it was, I was, I was annoyed at first because I was like, oh, I, I only wanted a couple more fights and then I was going to retire. Um, so it just, yeah, it just, it's just one of, one of those things. Um, I could have probably stayed in box and had a few more fights, but it was, I just didn't want to um, take the risk of losing my sight. Um, for me, it was, it just, yeah, it wasn't worth the risk. I've, 
I'd already achieved being world champion as a, a professional boxer and um, I've, I'd have achieved all the all the all the medals from every tournament that you can think of um, in the amateur boxing side. So I was like, yeah, you know what? I've I've literally done the most. So <laughs> I've done the most. <laughs> 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 and when you and when you started boxing, I know that it wasn't a recognised Olympic women's sport when you started. So to achieve all those medals and to achieve everything that you did in your career, which is just astounding, how did it feel to get to the top and be the best as a woman? Oh, unbelievable, unbelievable achievement. It was I remember the first Olympics I won. I remember just standing on the podium and just thinking, like, yes, this is what the all the hard work was for, the, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the injuries. It's all been for, for this moment. And now um, the girls that come after me, they, they won't have to fight as hard as I did to get women's boxing recognised. They can just go down to the, the local gym, um, compete for England, and then go on to, to boxing for the, for the country. And it's, it's just nice to be able to, to see all these girls coming through now. Yeah. And have you noticed that it's becoming a more inclusive sport, that more girls are trying to get into it? Yeah, definitely. After the 2012 Olympics, we had a 50% increase in women's, uh, women's boxing, which is huge, like massive. Yeah. And it was, it's just, it was just really, really nice to see. I wasn't expecting um, everybody to take to win- women's boxing as much as they did. And it, it completely blew me away. I think what's so incredible as well that obviously you are a role model for, for young girls and is there any advice that you would have for girls who want to get into sports like boxing but perhaps a little bit apprehensive? Oh, I'd say definitely go down to your local gym. Um, if you're feeling a little bit nervous, maybe take some friends down with you as well, you know, until you, you feel comfortable, but definitely give it a go. It's a good all over body workout, even if you don't want to compete. I saw in 2016 that you said that Whilst you've experienced racism and sexism in boxing, you've never experienced homophobia. But has racism been something that you've come up against frequently as a female boxer in this fairly male-dominated sport? Not so, not so much in the in the boxing, but I'd I'd say it's more in general day-to-day life. Really, it's it it was more the um, the subtle things, the um, people moving the handbags, like, I need to take your handbag, <laughs> you know, just the, it's the sort of things being followed around the stores by um, security guards. It's the, it's the, it's the, yeah, it's the, it's the under, uh, what would, what would you, is it microaggression, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I think it's, it's the undercurrent sometimes where you just feel like you're being watched and you yeah. say, I'm just here to buy a t-shirt, like, please, <laughs> yeah. please leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I think what's interesting as well is that you touched upon it in your TikTok that we spoke about just at the beginning with your girlfriend, Ella, in that people have an issue with you being black and your girlfriend being white. Is that something that has frequently come up in conversation when people have spoken about you two? Um, well, we got a comment on, um, on Instagram and um, a, w- a woman was saying that she was so proud of us being a, um, an interracial couple and we'd never we had to think about it for a second because we'd never actually thought about it like that we just thought oh we're two people together I was like damn but I guess yeah I guess we are <laughs> yeah I think it I think it can also meet that visibility can mean a lot for people to see people yeah like them and, and recognize them and have that just that understanding I think would be really important yeah definitely because um because Ella, Ella gets uh, comments as well because she looks she looks white, but she's quite a Pakistani as well and quite a Portuguese. So she gets she gets comments as well. Yeah, I can imagine that's it's difficult as well when people assume things about you without yeah. without knowing you as such. Yeah. yeah, I think for Ella it was more um, if she was with certain groups of people. And then they'd talk about other races and mm. she'd be like, well, I'm Pakistani as well. So, you know, and it just, it just makes you, it just makes you wonder sometimes like what people actually think about you. Totally. Totally. And I think that's why it's so important. Like, you know, with your TikTok and just being out there with the message that hate is not okay in any form. It yeah. doesn't where you're speaking or who you're speaking to. It's still just so wrong. 
to yeah. perpetuate it. Oh, my God. Well, Nicola, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. And for sharing everything wonderful about you and your incredible achievements with Women's Health. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.